Straight Line is brought to you in part by the Toledo Clinic ENT, specializing in allergy, nasal, and sinus care. You're watching Straight Line with Dan Rogers, President and CEO of Cherry Street Mission Ministries. Welcome to Straight Line, and my name is Delray Bush. Dan, I am so excited to talk with you and your wife, Crystal, here in a few moments. Yes. Uh, about family. Um, you know, you have uh, four boys, one girl, yes. and uh, eight grandchildren. Yes. So I am so excited to um, delve into this topic and how it relates to church and then, of course, Cherry Street. Yeah, of course. You know, family is so core to Christian life and to uh, the very uh, tenet of our belief system in the Christian church. And certainly the sanctity of home and the sanctity of health in the home is absolutely critical. As a matter of fact, if you just look historically about uh, bad things that normally happen are happening out of uh, dishealth or fragmentation inside the home. I hear you say dishealth um, and, you know, with the family. What does that mean? Do you think that's going on pretty regularly right now? Well, I think the family, more than at any other time in our history, is in peril. As a matter of fact, I think we live in perilous times, as Paul warned Timothy, the day would soon come when perilous times will befall us all. And I believe those perilous times have uh, befallen us and that now more than ever, the admonition to be sober and to be vigilant uh, when it comes to uh, um, uh, scoring up the family and storing up for us uh, the health that is necessary for generations to come is now also upon us. What do you think the church needs to do um, to get family where it needs to be? Well, I think uh, the church has done a phenomenal job over the last generations of really including uh, the entire family in its faith practice. You go to almost any church in America today and certainly here regionally, and you will see children in youth programs. You'll see you know, multi-generational programs. I think the church has done a really phenomenal job in building the kind of infrastructure for family that promotes health. I think the great frontier though, to answer your question about the church, the great frontier is to take what's happening relative to health inside our church structure and really make an impact in street, in neighborhood, and across our city. And I hear you say health with the church. What does health mean? Well, one of the things I hope that you can get Crystal and I talking about when she gets on stage is uh, that health really at the baseline or it can be defined by someone who just refuses to give up. You know, and that is so critical because when you start giving up, when you start letting back on ground and uh, you start back, back pedaling, then you are inviting into that space. Uh, dishealth and fragmentation will soon follow. Well, I am so excited to talk with you and Crystal today. So. Well, she's a great lady. Uh, she's a leader in her own right. She's a missionary uh, to Jamaica. Uh, she's a uh, great fun and certainly over the 36 years that we've been married, she's been a great comrade. As you think about uh, standing in the fire of families' lives and individuals' lives through Cherry Street, uh, take a look at your great opportunities uh, today and throughout this year. Imagine being tossed into hell. Imagine standing there. Imagine the heat of it, the flame of it, the worry of it. Now imagine someone is standing right beside you because they are. And you know they're not there for any other reason than you. That is Cherry Street Mission Ministries. We stand in the hell of other people's choosing on purpose. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. Well, today we are going to discuss um, all types of things in relation to the family, um, the church, and Cherry Street. But uh, before we do that, tell us a little bit about your family. We have four sons and a daughter, okay. and we have uh, seven grandchildren, and the eighth one, little Eloise, is on her way. Yeah, May. and uh, this is them, uh, Christmas 2014. Uh, this is most of us, uh, not all of our family. The ones that live is here in, in Toledo. Photograph. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, why don't you tell them, Crystal, about uh, the grandkids that are there? Yeah. Well, we on our far right, we got Gabriel and his wife Christine, and then they have four children. He's holding Ruth Ann, Emma, her sisters in front of her, Levi's down in front well, of her. Well, from the screen, it's to the far left. Okay. And then where is, where is, oh, Noah's over on the other side in front of me. Yes. And then on the other side is Samuel and his wife, Andrea, 
and they have three, and they have the fourth one on the way. Okay, yes. very cool. So we got Jonathan and Alexander and Tell and me Evie. what they're all doing right now. Well, first of all, all those kids right there, they're <laughs> very insane. I think that's the most important thing to know <laughs> about that brood of people, is they're all just nuts. And they, they didn't get that from their parents or anything like well, that, Well, right? it wasn't passed from our generation, I can tell you that. I mean, the it's pure yeah. sanity that is uh, with us. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, our family is uh, very, um, uh, we're- Opinionated. We are, and we're, you <laughs> oh, know, we're not no risk averse. This is some of us uh, recently at uh, Disney World. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that I think we've done over the years is, is help our kids uh, really pass on the generational uh, risk that's necessary uh, to walk in health and to experience life. Sure. And what are all your kids doing right now? Where are they at? All that good stuff. Well, you've seen the two families that live here. Gabriel um, mm -hmm. is a police officer in Waterville. Mm -hmm. And Samuel works for AT&T and is also a youth pastor. And then Caleb is in the middle there in the back, and he is EMT, and he's with his wife, Honey Laura, in Las Vegas. Very cool. And then Josiah is in Portland, Oregon, gone to college. A little bit of everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Yes, mm -hmm. and our daughter's in Norwalk. Okay, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. cool. So how have you managed to do all that? I mean, you guys have been married for how many years now? <laughs> 36. 36. 36. Uh, how, how, I know that there's good times and bad times in marriage and things like that. How have you managed to um, stay true to how you wanted to raise your kids, how you wanted to um, family together? Well, um, drugs. No. No. <laughs> we, you know, faith. You know, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, a lot of sobriety. You know, you have to pay attention uh, to every day, mm -hmm. and you have to pay attention to the one that uh, you've chosen to live your life with, I think. I was actually scared to get married and um, scared to fall in love. I was going to be a missionary and never get married. So when Dan and I started dating at a very young age, well, I was 16 when I met him. And so I had a lot of questions. And um, it wasn't just important enough for me to marry a Christian, but I actually wanted to marry somebody that had the same values. And my value was to be in full-time ministry and to serve others. And so I wanted someone that had that value. I wanted someone who had the same kind of values. Even though we came from different families, we did sort of have the same values on discipline, raising our children, and that family is very important to all of us. So um, our home environment is more important to us than what we're accomplishing in the world. And that's, that's the first place that we guard, and, and that's our treasure. So um, we were in agreement for that. And he was a man that just wouldn't take no, because I did try to scare him off, but it she didn't did. work. <laughs> and so. tell me a little bit about your missionary work. Um, I'm mostly in Jamaica, and um, again, I wanted to be a missionary when I was a little girl, and so now that my children are out of the home and um, I have more time, I can do that. Very so cool. that's, yes. Yeah. Missions, you know, missions is has been a big part of our live. life, mm -hmm. um, you know, both globally and now locally. So we both believe and release each other to believe and to behave that uh, right now God has called me to local missions through Cherry Street and my wife is uh, called globally and has been doing a phenomenal job over the last nine years. Sure, and you know, you, you've worked in many different church environments mm -hmm. and things like that. How do you two see um, the church playing such a pivotal role in the family? I think it's a real um, foundation for support and encouragement and just really um, try not to pigeonhole a family. Hmm. What you do know? you mean by that? Um, each family is unique, each family has gifts, and so when those gifts come together and blended, you know, one might be very musical, another might be very studious, one might be very artsy, and I think if we can embrace in the church the differences in diversity, just like we have diversity in our own family, mm -hmm. um, and live, give room for each of those gifts, then there's more of a fullness and more health. How did your backgrounds influence um, where you are now in your relationship? Your, you know, the backgrounds that you've seen, maybe your family or your family. How has that influenced, uh, you know, your family today and uh, your parenting styles and things like that? Well, I know for me, I felt like I came from a perfect family, and um, it took me several years to realize that no one's totally, you know, without God, um, perfect. Um, but. Um, I had a real solid foundation. So for me, anything negative that happened to me in school, for example, 
it was at home that I learned how to deal that, with that. I don't believe that it's the teacher's job. I don't believe a teacher can support and love and know my child intimately the way mm -hmm. I can when I carried them in the womb mm -hmm. or changed their diaper or was with them when they're sick. And so th I thank God that I had a mom and dad both that were very involved. If I had boys teasing me at school, my dad taught me how to deal with that. If I had someone, uh, you know, girls doing cat fight stuff, my mom taught me how to deal with that. And they would point out to me that it wasn't always about me, that maybe they were having a problem in their home and that when people are mean to you, there's something going on that makes them mean. And, and so I just thank God for the family that I had that even before we were Christians really taught me how to have a healthy relationship and have trust and safety and loyalty. And then those things were um, really grew quickly when we became to the Lord and were able to use it for His glory. How about you, Dan? Well, I mean, we came from uh, vastly different uh, families. Um, I mean, even geographically, Crystal's family was in the country in southeastern Ohio. I grew up in the city in the suburbs of Cleveland. Um, her family uh, was, um, you know, very healthy, very faith-oriented. Uh, my family was very not. Uh, so early on, you know, I had to learn that if I was going to be safe, it was going to be outside the home. I was not safe in my home. Um, and really to accentuate, you know, how we have led our family and how we have led our marriage. We have embraced that diversity. You know, I haven't tried to make Crystal uh, um, more edgy and uh, she hasn't tried to make me more soft, uh, but we've learned how to sharpen and soften uh, in our marriage and how to blend that. And uh, the value of you know, not, not losing those early childhood development years and letting God redeem them, really, and redeem and bring glory to however we were raised. So I think a mark of health is, is um, embracing that early on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the, the horrible things that happened to me when I was growing up, you know, God has used for His good. You know, He mm -hmm. didn't erase them from me, um, but he, he made something fantastic out of it. And how cool is that, that, you know, God can, um, you know, even if you didn't have the, the, the best upbringing, you can learn from those types of things and he can show you things through them, right? Right, absolutely. And I'm sure, um, you know, having that great upbringing, um, you know, no one has a perfect upbringing. Uh, right. You know, I like to think I had a great upbringing, but mm -hmm. you know, no one is perfect except mm -hmm. for God. And um, I mean, I'm sure that made a difference uh, in your relationship as well, learning um, from a healthy foundation, right? Well, you know, to emphasize the importance of a healthy family and a whole family, I mean, think about our marriage alone. Mm -hmm. uh, I came from you know, enormous dishealth and disconnectivity. Mm -hmm. When I went into Crystal's family as someone who was dating their daughter mm -hmm. and then engaged and then married, it was really the stability of her family that reversed my fortune and reversed my uh, outlook on life. So to emphasize just how powerful a healthy ecosystem in family is, uh, is no better demonstrated than mine. I could have easily drug Crystal into the mores of my upbringing. I could have said, hey, this is the not way easily. we're going to... Not, okay. not, not easily, not easily. She says. No. Well, I could have done it if I you know, used Kicking the club. Kicking and screaming. I know yeah. how to run. Yeah. I know how to run. But, you know, our lives could have been, could have been worse, mm -hmm. you know? If, mm -hmm. if I didn't see a better way, a different, uh, uh, a more healthy ecosystem, and her family was that for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how her family became my reparenting, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and rebranding as an individual, as a man, to think more healthy. And frankly, as a result of that, uh, we have, we have uh, merged, as I said a moment ago, we've merged those competencies. And uh, now it's a joy for us to watch the way our kids um, and now our grandkids mm -hmm. explode with possibility and the right kind of risk to really become adventurers and pioneers and where God's leading them. Well, what you said earlier is so key. You know, no one can know your children like you right. do. You right. know, you carry them in your Or they right. shouldn't well, anyway. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, schools are wonderful. Our public school system, especially in Toledo, uh, um, we, we are so lucky to have right. it. Um, but, you know, at home, we still have to nurture those gifts um, right. and cultivate talents. Um, you know, in you know, to feel God inside them and to know to know God, um, those things only a parent can teach, right? Right, and I think sometimes um, society or even the family has said, 
you know, let the school do it or let the church do it or let somebody else do it when really God gave those children to you. Mm -hmm. right. And it is your job. And um, I don't believe anybody can do it like the parent can. They are there to support you. It's unfair to expect a teacher to also educate my child, but also have their soul and their emotions and everything else mm -hmm. um, under control. And so, yeah. um, you know, I think the other thing is that parents, unfortunately, sometimes just think about the moment. I'm busy, I gotta get to work, I gotta do this. Mm -hmm. I just want Johnny to be happy right now. I just want him to be obedient. And they're right. not slowing down and realizing that everything you're doing is teaching Johnny something. Mm -hmm. And now we're old enough to see that I, I thought that way. I thought yeah. about what I wanted my child when I told him yes or no to something, something simple um, when they're two and three, of what I wanted it to teach them. Mm -hmm. And now what I did not think, I, I did it so that when they became an adult, they would be able to go out into society and be a great citizen mm -hmm. and serve the Lord with all their heart and be happy in life. But I didn't think about the benefit I was going to get from it. And the benefit that I'm getting from slowing down and doing that with my children is now my grandchildren coming back and teaching grandma like they think, you know, you don't know it. You know, grandma, you don't call people um, stupid and you don't say shut up. That's rude. And, you know, three years old and they're coming back and teaching you and you're getting to see all that you poured out into your children um, to do a good job because you want to be a good parent, never realizing that when you get our age, you're actually going to have an inheritance of sitting back and just thanking God for everything that He's done through their lives. Can, well, I, can I also oh. say something about that, Delray? Mm -hmm. You know, Crystal and I also never, dis never subscribe to the notion that it takes a village to raise a child. Hmm. Uh, we never, <laughs> we never gave our kids to the village. You know, we never said, help me raise our children. You know, we, we subscribe more to the idea that it takes a village to raise a parent mm -hmm. and a parent to raise a child. Wow. The people that we put in our lives made For us our better. Our support. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they strengthened us and because our kids had a better mom and a better dad uh, with, with great friends and, a, with, and an awesome ecosystem, mm -hmm. they benefited from that. Mm -hmm. But we never brought people into our lives and gave them authority over our children. We mm -hmm. gave them authority over us. We, we said, teach us, love us, care for us, be our support system, uh, have our back when we need to have our back. Um, but we never gave our kids to the village concept. We believe, as Crystal said a moment ago, we believe those kids belong to us. They were given to us. And I cannot tell you something, uh, nobody was around when we made our kids. Hmm. We did that in private. You know, these, these, kids, <laughs> these kids belong to us. No, I'm serious. We didn't have sex on a bus stop. I mean, we... we <laughs> Crystal's telling me shush on the show. Uh, we had, it's straight line with Dan Rogers. We, we had those children. It might be a little too straight. In private, you know. Uh, those children uh, belong, and when you're a parent, those kids belong to you. Uh, they don't belong to me and Crystal, and they don't belong to you. You know, when I think about Corgan, your daughter, mm -hmm. uh, they don't belong to us. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's better for us to say, Support how can you. we help you mm. be healthy? Because we know if we have a healthy you, you'll have a healthy child. And that's, mm -hmm. that's frankly the biblical way mm -hmm. of going. And I'm, I'm, I'm a bit animated about it because I see, I see the damage that's happening mm -hmm. uh, in this village concept that we think somehow that, that our kids belong to everybody. The damage it does to the kid that wonders who the heck is parenting me mm -hmm. is uh, almost irreversible. Well, the behavior to the family then that says, it's not my job, mm -hmm. you the teacher do not, it. Not it's not my job, the you the counselor do it, you do it, you know, or somebody else isn't doing their job. And mm -hmm. then what does the child get out of that? Mm -hmm. Who can I trust? Sure. Where's my confidence? Mm -hmm. Mom and dad don't even know. Mm -hmm. And I think the church is doing a great job in supporting parents right now. Yes. Yes. You know, um, for me, uh, I, I mean, when you said slow down, you know, with your children, I can relate to that. Um, being a mom, I, I have a new mom, I have a six month old, and uh, you definitely have to slow down. You can't just leave anymore. No. <laughs> Everything just goes a little bit slower. It does. <laughs> so, um, and you know, rightly so. Yeah, absolutely. And what a cool lesson. Something, I, I mean, God put her in my life for a reason. Um, and it's so clear that He wanted me to slow down mm -hmm. to see those things right. um, and to see the little things mm -hmm. and to be thankful for the little things. Mm -hmm. which is so awesome. But I think the church is doing a great job in supporting parents, um, being a village to those parents um, through different life groups right. for parents, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, small right. groups, um, uh, something I'm in, momentum, uh, things like that. And those are so integral 
to to uh, us and um, you know for our guests at Cherry Street um, we often see that they've yeah. never even had a family yeah. they don't even know what a family looks like right. sure. um, how do we at Cherry Street then support someone who doesn't know what a family mm -hmm. looks like who's never seen mom and dad yeah. in the same room not fighting well you have to model it hmm. you know we have uh, eight families that are staying with us at Cherry Street in our eight family units. Hmm. And each one of those families needs someone to model right behavior and right love hmm. and what health really looks like and what health can really produce. There has to be an engineering of an ecosystem. And you start on day one when you're married and if you, if you weren't able to do that, hmm. someone didn't help you do that, then you need to get Stop somebody in your life to provide you those navigational skills. So, you know, as you're watching the show today, we, we hope that you're thinking about, well, I, I, I have a healthy marriage and I have a healthy family. Um, I, come on, honey, let's go, let's go mentor another family at right. Cherry Street. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very, very key, not to mention the thousands of individuals a month that we serve through Cherry Street. How can um, someone who's watching today go ahead and model that behavior at Cherry Street? Is it, is it pretty easy to do? Well, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to cherrystreetmission.org, mm -hmm. uh, check out our volunteer orientation sites and days, come down to a, an orientation, learn what it's like to uh, see the behavior and the gospel of Jesus Christ at Cherry Street. You can even fill out an application online. I, I will tell you that of the thousands of volunteers that come through Cherry Street, they all come through the same way and they all come through with ease. Hmm. Okay, well, good to know. And you don't have to, um, th there's a lot of different avenues to volunteer, right? I mm -hmm. mean, if, as a family, you can serve a meal together. Um, you could just sit down, sit down and have a meal with someone, right? Yeah, you know, uh, Cherry Street has very family-friendly volunteer opportunities. You mentioned a few of them. Mm -hmm. You can come down and prepare a meal, come down and serve a meal. Here's a key thing, come down and have a meal on us. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great family event. The LifeBridge Center, uh, folding clothes, helping us uh, serve the community uh, through uh, clothing and furniture donations is very uh, family friendly and wonderful. Families that come down in any of those areas just go home on Saturdays and whenever they come down full of life and happy that, that they participated in, in a better community. What are we doing right now at Cherry Street Mission Ministries to mentor the families that we have? Well, uh, shows like this, you know, we are encouraging uh, families that are watching the show today to realize that there are families in peril because uh, we live in perilous times. As Paul warned Timothy in 2 Timothy that we were going to be in, those times are now upon us. And it's important for us that have health to uh, share that health with uh, other people and uh, to reverse the perilous times that people are facing right now. And I think with that family, um, sometimes when they've, if they have seen a family, it might not be a very good um, a good grasp of what family should look like. So, so when a guest sees a family that is is acting healthily, mm -hmm. that makes such a big difference in their lives, and they can continue on and heal from past mm -hmm. um, wounds and traumas um, mm -hmm. and get better. Right? That is correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the hope of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, Crystal? I totally agree. Yeah. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, I am so thankful that you came on today and uh, talked with us, Crystal. Um, I hope you will come back and uh, visit with us again, um, talk a little bit maybe more about your missions and things like that. Thank so you, Delray. We are very thankful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Delray. You know, every day at Cherry Street, you help people stand in the gap and you help change and transform lives. You know that there isn't a person, volunteer, donor, staff member, or guest at Cherry Street that hasn't been changed radically by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Take a look. You know what Cherry Street Mission Ministries from 1947 until this very day has always been about people. You have people like you, people that come through our doors for a wider range of reasons. So when you financially and prayerfully support Cherry Street, you are actually making an investment in life revitalization. And I think one of the cool things about that is we're all about revitalizing and transforming every life that comes through one of our doors, no matter what the reason. That's the great thing about your support and your investment of Cherry Street is the way that lives are transformed and changed. Well, you know, Delray, it was great having uh, my wife, Crystal, on the show. Uh, you saw her, that uh, she's really a leader in her own right. 
she's loved uh, and, and uh, in circles that are pretty phenomenal. Uh, and the way that I've watched her over 36 years raise um, our kids has been really inspirational. Yeah, it's so clear that you guys complement each other so well. And I think what um, Crystal and you both had to say about family, about the church, um, how the church every day is impacting families and how yes. they can make the biggest impact, in my opinion, and through Jesus Christ can make the biggest impact on families. Well, you know, Delroy, can I just say that, you know, family and a healthy family is the ultimate preventionary tool in our community. Mm -hmm. And if we believe that an ounce of prevention could provide a pound of cure, Mm -hmm. is or is equal to a pound of cure, then I would think that from the church level, church leadership level, we would pour every ounce of energy and resources we could into mom and dad mm -hmm. and to help them be as healthy as they possibly can because when we got healthy moms and dads, mm -hmm. we got healthy kids. Absolutely, I agree 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you watch today's show, we really hope that you're encouraged. We hope that uh, you're beginning to think, well, wait a minute. I, we should have a conversation. Hopefully you're having this at your table or, or uh, in your living room. We're having this conversation about how can we really engage now in community. And uh, Cherry Street is but an avenue. And we certainly would encourage that avenue. So if you're thinking, you know what, I'd, I'd like to really take the health of our family and really come along beside another family. Not just write a check, though that's good. Not just bring down some clothes, that's good. Trust me, it is, uh, and I don't, don't diminish that at all. But can I just tell you something? You trump your check and you trump your, the clothes that you would donate. You, you are valuable and you matter. And so when you come along beside another family in trouble, all that just means the world to them because they get to see a, a role model that I guarantee you they've not seen, and that role model indeed can be you. And listen, if it's not Cherry Street, although I hope that it is, you have uh, avenues of church, community centers, tons of places, even go to the local hospital and come along beside families that are going through difficulty with chronic illness or disease. And you'll be amazed at what your gift of you provides to people in need because there's no greater gift in my opinion. Now, you may be thinking, hey Dan, how do I get involved at Cherry Street if I wanna begin volunteering? It's so easy to do. Go to cherrystreetmission.org, click on that, how can I help button? And boy, right there, the world of Cherry Street opens right up in front of you there. You can pray for us because you'll see the stories. You can give a gift of financial uh, support so that you can continue to participate in the betterment of community in a sustainable way. And you can volunteer and we hope you'll do all the above. But bend a knee for us, will you please pray? Then ask God's grace upon the thousands of people that arrive at Cherry Street every month somewhere in the neighborhood of nearly 1,700 men and women a year, uh, that's a unique count, uh, will arrive at the doors of Cherry Street. It's an incredible thing that you and I do together. And I think, Delray, what we've done as a community is we've kept our promise to each other. I think our community has said, we need to pledge and promise that there's a place called Cherry Street for people in need. And there has been an opportunity for us to keep our pledge and our promise for other people as well. And I think that that, um, that the person that comes to Cherry Street comes in so many different forms. Yes, no question about it. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.